The objective of experiment seven is to carry out two chemical reactions in order to determine the correct chemical formula for a copper chloride hydrate. This is the formula. The X, Y, and Z represent the mole ratio of copper to chloride to water. You'll be solving for X, Y, and Z, the number of moles of each of those elements or compounds. This is an overview of what you'll be doing in the experiment. The first thing you're going to do is heat your sample of copper chloride hydrate. And you're doing this in order to drive off the water of hydration. So you can see when we heat our sample, we'll be left with a solid copper chloride and the water will be evaporated as steam. The next thing you're going to do is determine the mass of water that was lost. So you can weigh your copper chloride hydrate before heating. You will weigh it after heating. The amount of water that was lost to the atmosphere, we then can calculate by difference. Once we have the mass, we can convert that to moles, and then we will have solved for our moles of water in our formula. The second thing you're going to do is conduct your next chemical reaction. And in this one, you're going to take your copper chloride solid that we had up here, you're going to dissolve it in water so we have an aqueous solution. Then you're going to do a single displacement reaction. So you're going to see if the copper, or I should say the aluminum, is going to displace the copper and form aluminum chloride. And then what's left is going to be your solid copper. Once you have your grams of copper, we can convert that to moles of copper using our molar mass. From the information we have here, we can figure out the grams of chlorine originally in our sample. So we can just do a simple subtraction. We can take what we originally started with. We can subtract the grams of copper from that and subtract the grams of water. What's left is going to be our grams of chlorine. And our grams of chlorine we can convert to moles of chlorine and then we have solved for our Y in chlorine. The data you'll be collecting in this experiment is the mass of an empty test tube in grams, the mass of the test tube plus your original sample, the copper chloride hydrate, then you're going to heat it up. You're actually going to heat it up two times. You're going to get the mass after the second heating when you remove the water. You'll record that. You'll need the mass of a filter paper. And then after you do the filtration with copper, you're going to get the mass of the filter paper and the copper after you heat it the second time. The procedure for experiment seven is as follows. The first thing you're going to do is tear a beaker. So tear means on your scale, you're going to push the button that says tear or zero. And that will subtract the mass of the beaker um, from the scale. So you're going to then put a test tube inside the beaker and record the mass of the test tube. By pushing the zero or tear button, it's getting the mass of just that test tube. Then you're going to add between 0.8 to 1 grams of copper chloride hydrate into the test tube and then recorded the mass of the test tube plus the copper chloride. So the way it would look in the lab is you'd have a beaker with your test tube inside of it. Next, you're going to heat your test tube over your Bunsen burner flame. As you can see here, you hold the test tube in a horizontal position and you're going to heat it until the color, which should be green, changes to brown. What that tells us is the water is being released. Once it goes completely from green to brown, we will have released all of our water. So you can see there's going to be condensation forming on the test tube and you will see it come out of steam out of your test tube. So the idea here is releasing all of the water from our copper chloride hydrate. Um, you're going to actually heat this after you see the color change. You're going to heat it for two more minutes longer just to ensure that all that water is released from the test tube. 
then you'll need to cool it, and then you're going to get the mass. So you, again, you're going to tear your beaker, and then you put the test tube plus the mass um, with the compound inside of it after we've released our water, and you're going to get that new mass, and that mass should be less than what you started with because we released the water. Then you're going to heat it a second time for two more minutes and reweigh. The reason we heat it the second time is to make sure all the water we released the first time. You want to record both of those masses. You're going to see if the difference between the first and the second heating is equal or less to 0 0.01 grams. If it's not, you're going to need to repeat it. So for example, if you weighed it the first time after heating and let's say it weighed 20.020 grams, you heat it the second time and it weighs 20.015 grams, the difference between that is 0.005 grams. So that's less than 0.01 grams, so then you're done. If your number was bigger than 0.01 grams, you're going to need to heat it a third time just to make sure that all the water was released from your compound. Next, you're going to take the brown solid that was in the test tube and put it in a clean beaker. And then you're going to take some DI water and rinse the test tube with it to make sure we get all of the brown solid, which is your copper chloride, out of the test tube and put into our beaker. And then you're going to swirl to dissolve that. And you want to observe any color changes and record that in your lab notebook. Now we have our copper chloride aqueous solution in the beaker. You're going to add a coiled wire to it. So you'll get a 12 centimeter wire and you coil it up, add that into the beaker, which is located right here, and then you want to record in your lab notebook any observations you see, what you observe here. And then you want to periodically swirl the reaction to keep it going. So the reaction that's actually happening in our beaker is our copper chloride aqueous solution. We've added the aluminum to it and we're doing a single displacement reaction forming a aluminum chloride aqueous solution. So we have aluminum ions and chloride ions and then we end up with solid copper. You'll need to add some six molar hydrochloric acid, approximately five drops. You're doing this to dissolve any aluminum that was not um, soluble and your solution should turn clear at this point. Then what we're after here is the copper. So the copper is going to be clinging to your aluminum wire. So you want to scrape that off. You can use your glass stirring rod to get off as much um, copper that you possibly can. And then you'll take your piece of aluminum wire, the remnants remaining, and then rinse that off over the beaker with some DI water to remove any copper that might be clinging to that aluminum. We want to collect all the copper that we have created. You need to weigh a piece of filter paper, so you'll record the mass in grams of how much your filter paper weighs. We need that because we're going to do a filtration. So the filtration means you're going to take your plastic funnel and you'll put your filter paper inside of the funnel. And then you're going to do the filtration by taking your um, aqueous um, solution that has the copper in it and pour it through the filter paper. So you're going to be able to collect the water down here and then the copper pieces will remain in the filter paper. And you want to actually rinse the solution um, until the litmus paper stays blue. So this is a piece of blue litmus paper here. When you first start it, because we added some acid to our solution, acid means the litmus paper will turn red. So when you first put it through, you'll see your litmus, litmus paper will turn red or sort of a pinkish color. You want to rinse it with water to make sure we remove all the acid from your copper. Um, and then when it stays blue, it means our acid is gone. And then you're going to take your filter paper with the copper on it, and you're going to heat that in the oven and then cool it and weigh it. And you're going to heat it about 10 minutes, get the mass. You're going to do this a second time for another 10 minutes, then you'll cool and weigh it. The same thing we did before, we heated it twice to make sure all of the water was removed from the filter paper. So you're gonna check the difference between the first and second heating. If it's less than 0.01 grams, you're done. If it's not, you would need to heat it again to make sure that your filter paper is completely dry. Because you can think about if my filter paper has some water on it and I'm trying to get the mass of that copper, if it's wet, that's gonna add to the mass of 
what I potentially would think is copper. Okay, so now for our calculations to determine our objective, which is determine the chemical formula for copper chloride hydrate. We're trying to solve for the X, Y, and Z, our molar ratio. So take note, it's not grams, it's moles of copper chloride and water that we're trying to determine, the X, Y, and Z. So we're gonna start with the water first. Um, so when we heated up our original sample, our copper chloride hydrate, we drove off the water. That's a decomposition reaction. Based on that, we can determine the mass of water that evaporated. Um, how we could do that is take the mass of our copper chloride hydrate and the test tube we originally weighed, minus the mass of just the test tube, and then we have the mass of our copper chloride hydrate, our original sample. Now we wanna know the mass of just the um, copper chloride, so we can take the mass of the copper chloride that's after heating with the test tube minus the mass of the test tube. That'll give us the mass of just the copper chloride. To determine the mass of water, we figure that out by difference. So it's the mass of the original sample minus the mass after heating, which is just copper chloride. The difference is the mass of the water. What we're looking for in our formula, however, is the moles of the water in the sample. So we will take the mass we calculated and use the molar mass to convert that to moles of water, which is our Z in our formula. Next, we want to determine the moles of copper or X in our formula. What we did is we reacted aqueous copper chloride with solid aluminum, which is a single displacement reaction and we were going to be able to determine the grams of copper we formed. We want to take note that the mass of your solid copper formed in the reaction is equal to the mass of copper ions in your copper chloride hydrate compound, because this is an ionic compound, so those are copper ions. So to calculate the mass of copper, you're going to take the mass of your copper and your filter paper after it was heated and cooled off, minus the mass of just the filter paper. The difference between those two gives us the mass of the solid copper on its own. What we're trying to calculate is the moles of copper. So we can take the mass we just calculated of copper and use the molar mass to convert to moles or X in our formula for moles of copper. Lastly, we want to determine our moles of chloride in our formula or the Y value. So in order to do that, we're going to get first the mass of chloride. The mass of chloride is going to be our original compound that we weighed out before heating it up, our copper chloride hydrate, minus the mass of the copper, which we calculated previously, minus the mass of the water, which we calculated. The difference between those will give us the mass of our chlorine. And again, in our formula, it's the mole ratio, so we need moles of chlorine. So we're gonna take the mass of the chloride times the molar mass of chloride, which is the same as chlorine, and we can use that to convert to moles of chlorine, which is Y, in our formula. Now, the point of this lab is to get our actual formula of the compound. So we've determined the moles of copper chloride and water. We have our X, Y, and Z. Now to get the formula of these three numbers, you're going to divide by the smallest of those numbers, and then you can come up with your chemical formula based on those moles. Your experiment seven lab report is due on Sunday night. You will have a quiz on experiment seven, which is quiz number eight, is also due on Sunday night. You can refer to page 88 in your lab manual for an example quiz, and the quiz answers are in the back of the lab manual if you want to check how you did on the quiz in the lab manual. Your pre-lab for experiment eight, you'll find your directions in your lab manual on page 90. It's the usual objective background and procedure that you'll write in your um, lab notebook. Um, that you should have that done by next Wednesday when I will talk about experiment eight. And again, when you're doing your pre-lab, we'll turn that in with your lab report.